Aloha and welcome. It's a beautiful day. I hope you enjoy the new caladiums we have this year. They're bigger and better than the ones we had on the previous welcoming banner thing. Welcome, it's a beautiful day. And the reason they're bigger and better is because all the animals on this little farm help nurture all the plants that you see when we do our shows. It's an amazing process. So I wanted to introduce you to the newest member of our nurturing team. He's pretty small. His, his, his name is Dumplin'. Can you say hi? Say hello, everybody. My name is Dumplin', and I'm, I'm just a little Dumplin'. And he's, ve he's very cute. He's a little bit shy still, so he's getting used to everything. But we're going to go and, and show you how he helps nurture everything. Here, have a carrot. I want a carrot. Maybe, maybe later, Mommy. I want to go. I want to go back in your pocket. Okay, we'll see you in just a minute. Okay. Well, here's Dumplin' again. He's he's almost too big to fit in my pocket much longer, but he really likes it in there because he likes to burrow. So one of the things Dumplin' really likes is is carrots. But because he's kind of shy, he wants to be in his little cage to eat the carrot. Don't you? He says yes, yes I do. I want to go in my cage. So. So let's let's show Dumplin's little little happy home. It's just a little home. He has a bigger one. Oh, right on the food dish. Let's watch him eat his food. He's a really good little guy. He he was an only child, so he needed a good home. Here's your carrot, and that's where he likes to eat and do his part in nurturing the little farm plants around here because. He likes to do many things that most... You talking? He's talking. Most guinea pigs like to do three things. They like to eat. They like to snuggle. Well, four things. They like to pee. And they, and they like to poop. So <laughs> we have a nice little cage here. And it's conveniently sized for just one little tiny guinea pig. Now, he's, he's an only child, so he needed a, a good home. And... So the people that gave him to me said, oh, I hope you will take good care of this guinea pig. And I said, of course I will. We're here in my chakra circle, which is in the middle of the front yard in the stone circle. But I've turned it into a chakra circle because I figured out how many stones were here and how many colors are in the chakras. So I thought it'd be nice to paint the chairs to match the colors of the chakra. So all you need is some acrylic paint and some old patio chairs and a big fat brush that you just go like this and then you just sort of paint the outside areas. I don't think you need to do all the legs, but you can if you want to. And so each color represents a different chakra, which is an energy center in the body for those of you that don't know what chakras are. I thought the chairs would be a nice touch because as many of you may or may not know, I'm an artist and I think having beautiful things in your home and yard is extremely important because the aesthetics bring your energy level up. So by painting the chairs, the colors of the chakras, you can decide what kind of day you're having and what chakra needs a little bit of work. For example, if you are having trouble talking, then that's the fifth chakra, that's the throat chakra. You're, suppose you can't express yourself the way that you want to. People are just not understanding you. It could be because there's too many helicopters flying overhead or maybe people just aren't listening. So you would sit in the blue chair, which I'm gonna paint next, and the health chakra and your heart chakra, that's the green chakra. So that's, that's what I'm painting now. So if you have room on your property to have a chakra center in your garden, then I would recommend that you get yourself a set of acrylic paint and some, some brushes and paint chairs up because it's going to look really nice and it's going to make you happy.
And if you don't have acrylic paint, then you can use house paint. Suppose you had, you know, the side of your house painted a nice celery color or yellow or white. You can actually mix in other colors for that and use that on your chairs. And then you just need to get the brush and add a little bit of color here and there. And then when the brush runs out of paint, you can blend it either by matching the color that's next to it or letting your brush go dry and then using something I like to call the dry, dry brush technique, which is just to wait until the brush runs out of paint and then you just sort of smear it on and it lightens the color amount that is being applied to the chair. And then it just sort of fades it in and that saves you a lot of trouble from having to get more paint. You just wait till it runs out on your brush and then you don't have to wash so much paint out of your brush either. It's, it's a nice technique. So you can use the dry brush technique and before you know it, you're going to have a lot of fun painting your chairs or as we talked about on another episode, painting your catchment tank, which is so important. You can camouflage it, make it blend in with your yard and do good things for yourself and, and your water. It's going to make your water work better too. So have a lot of fun, make your yard beautiful and, and remember to be happy. Whatever you do, when you're using paint or any other material, unless you're growing it yourself and you can <laughs> just use all you want, like if you want to stain something with some berries from the front yard, you don't have to be quite as meticulous, but I personally do not like to waste anything because I figure money saved is money earned and I don't know about the rest of you, but it's a lot of work to earn money. So. If I have leftover paint, I'll find someplace else to use it. So I suggest that the rest of you do the same. If, the, if you didn't finish painting the front of the cover of your water pump door, then just go ahead and use whatever you got left from painting your chairs and get back here and use up the rest of it. And you don't have to use more paint to finish it. What you can do is wait till you paint the next chair which is going to be the blue one and just bring the blue paint back here and then use that to blend in with the rest of the colors that you have. Lohi. She's, she's a little bit shy and so I was I was thinking I could I could trick her out of her little hiding place with a cookie but she wants to eat the cookie while she's in there. <laughs> she has a cute little goat face. She's very very sweet because as you, as you know we 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 lost the bigger goat dasher. So this is a Lohi. She's an itty bitty goat. She's very very cute. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the benefits of having a goat and having ducks. Because when you have a goat and ducks, what the ducks will do is they'll come into the goat pen and eat up all the extra things that the goat leaves. And then they'll, they'll leave their mess in here too and they'll do some things to the water which make it very, very nutritious. So then all you have to do is come in later and get the water and then get the whatever's left over and you go to your favorite plants and then you can nurture them. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So the duck water works really good for watering your little planters. Look at how healthy all these pansies and the lobelia are, which are really good in a salad. And then the hay you can put underneath to help inhibit the growth of weeds as well as nurture the beautiful plants. So we have some nice
Sumerias right now, which you don't often see in the rainforest because we sometimes don't get enough sun. So thank you, ducklings, and thank you, little Alohi. You're very, very pretty goat. We're going to see if we can get her to come out. Maybe later. Maybe later. They like to eat lots of grain. So this one is, is corn, molasses, and barley. And it's nice because you can put it in a little dish and then she'll come and she'll help herself to it and hopefully get plenty of it before the ducks do. And the reason that we have it in a glass container, even though I've seen her actually open the glass container, so she knows how to open this, you have to put it in a glass container because if you don't put it in a glass container, suppose you put it in a cardboard container with a plastic lid, guess what? Somebody else comes at night time and chews their way through. Because in the rainforest, there's lots of little fruit mice and rats and they've got big sharp teeth. So, but it makes a nice porn spout, but I, I don't think that I'm gonna leave it in this container because before, before you know it, somebody else will eat all of it. Come here, Lohi. I have another cookie for you. I was originally thinking that this, this cookie container would be a good a good container too, but I, I don't think so. I think they're going to chew through this too. So come on, Alohi, come and get your cookie. I'm going to throw it in there. We want to get a nice picture of us. I think she's, she's a little shy today, but maybe later. She's watching me toss these things in. Okay, so keep your food for your animals in a glass container, but keep it out of the way where they can get into it because a goat is smart enough to unscrew the lid of, of a container like this. If you leave it on the stairs, they all figure out how to unscrew it. So keep it up on a high shelf and plastic containers need to stay inside the barn or the garage or on your bedroom shelf. And by the way, do, do you like my new outfit? I, I thought this was pretty nice. I hate it from a pair of overalls. And, and I'm surprised that there's not a designer line of farm wear like this for other ladies that, that like the overalls but want more of a frilly look. So there, there you go, Martha Stewart. This could be your new line if you wanted it to. Okay, I think Alohi's thinking of coming over. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> She's thinking about it. Oh, I think I... because that can contaminate other things. So having ducks is a very good idea. Well, the ducks are helping to nurture too because, you know, little little Dumplin' left some guinea snacks in there. And, and you know, things, food that he didn't eat, little carrot pieces and 
whatnot. So they're in there, and while they're cleaning that up, they're leaving their fertilizer to help nurture those beautiful anthuriums. Now, if we could just get the goat to stop chewing down the mother-in-law tongues, those big, beautiful plants that grow up the side and chewing down with their goat landscaping technique, it would be a lot prettier, but I, th I think it's coming along. The anthuriums seem very happy. A lot of people have asked me how to make matzo balls. They've never had a matzo ball. They're very curious. What does a matzo ball taste like? Well, I'm here today to show you how to make matzo balls. People say, what do you do with them? You put them in chicken soup. It's one of the best things you can do. So you get yourself a box of matzo crackers or matzo mix if you can find it. And you take the crackers and you squish them up so that you get about a half, half a cup of crackers there. And then what you do is you get... The recipe calls for two eggs, but because these are the farm fresh eggs, you, you need three because they're kind of little. So you put that in there, and you just you just throw the eggshells out into your garden, of course, because that's why I like cooking on the porch because because it's so nice. It's it's just easy, and people, you know, I have these new neighbors. <laughs> they just moved here, and they go, Sherry, do you have a garbage disposal? We just got a garbage disposal. And I like. Yeah, I got a garbage disposal. Is <laughs> that that chicken over there? You see her? She loves, she loves chicken shells. Yeah, you do. I mean, chicken egg shells, egg shells. So then, two tablespoons of of cooking oil. I like using olive oil. Let's put that third egg in there. Ooh, should have used the other dish. Okay, this one's only going to get two eggs in it. So you just kind of mix it up. And then you put it in the refrigerator for about 15 minutes, and then you form the matzo ball. So we're going to put this in the refrigerator. After your matzo mix has sat in the refrigerator for 15 minutes, you wet your hands and then you proceed to make little matzo balls by rolling them into a ball. They need to be about one inch in diameter, kind of like little macaroons, but they're very, you know, very nice. It's, it's one of the most traditional foods that, that you can make if you're um, Northern European ancestry at all. And one of my friends had never had a matzo ball, so I, I made made one for him. He's he's of German descent. And after he ate it, he said, you know, these matzo balls would be really good if you stuffed them with pork. And apparently, he doesn't know much about the tradition of eating matzo, but anyways, to each his own. So once you've made some matzo balls, you drop them in some nice boiling water, and then you come back in about 20 minutes, and take out your matzo balls. After about 20 minutes, you lift the cover and you pull out your matzo balls. They should be finished cooking by now. Notice how they've grown in size. And you just drop them into your bowl of chicken soup. You're ready for lunch. Enjoy. going on everywhere in the world, water conservation is more important than ever, especially if you live in Puna and you're depending on the water catchment for your water supplies. And guess what? you got to pay attention to this stuff. Do you notice what's happening here? The water is coming out of the spout, but guess what? It's going down the side of the tank. You know why? Because the top of the spout is not over the hole, apparently. And because I'm short, I have to get a ladder to see what's going on. But if you're getting rain, but your tank isn't filling up, this could be the problem. And it can be fixed easily with a bungee cord. So all you have to do is move it so that 
that it's going to go in the middle and not slow down the side of your tank and then relax the bungee cord so that it's more efficient. There, that's better. Make sure you don't get your glove caught in the, in the string there. See that? It's coming out and it's actually going in the tank. Still slowing down the side a little bit, but not as bad as it was. You want to maximize your water. There it goes. Yeah, I'm glad I noticed that. So when it's raining, pay attention. This is the first place you need to go. Because if water's not coming out of here at all, then you have another problem. So we'll go look at that in a little bit. The other thing you want to look at is your other gutters because if one of the gutters coming off of your roof is spewing out water, that could mean several things. It could mean that it's clogged somewhere and not all the water that you need to be going into your pipes is not coming through because for me, it, there's a lot of leaves that usually get stuck in the gutters so you got to get up there and clean them all the time and then the other thing it could mean is that there's some other kind of a stoppage so you need to look at your gutters if they're overflowing look, the way this one is then you need to go and and check the lines maybe clean you know out the gutters maybe keep your roof a little bit cleaner and you need to do that fairly often not just once a year but at least once a month and better twice a month so you know, if you don't want to get up there and do it, find, find somebody who will. It's important. Another thing you can do if you have a leaky gutter and you have dust is make that their special spot. You could win. get a few bugs in the process. And if you take your guinea along with you and you have duck things everywhere, you can just take stuff out of your pocket. Don't put the duck stuff in your pocket. But you can put the guinea turds in your pocket that are usually going to be left over. And you just toss them on your favorite plant. And then you get these nice big, big flowers, which is pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. Let's see if I can show you this one. This one really takes the cake. It's, it's as big as my face. It's pretty cool what the animals will help you do around the yard if you just, if you just let them. We have a, a little prime. Donkey, banana time, and time for fun. Hooray! Yeah. We're glad everybody's here. Come on, let's all give a cheer for everyone. We need to go in places. Put on your happy faces. And everybody give themselves a great big hip hooray. Hurrah! It's donkey time. Donkey, donkey, doo-da. Donkey, donkey, doo-da. Donkey, doo-da. Hooray, hooray, Mocha. Hooray, Mocha. animals are really important to me. Now, Chili Dog here, he's had a rough life. He was a rescue dog and he was trained to be a hunter. And so it took us a while till we figured out what works best for Chili Dog. But I've discovered that giving him lots of love and letting him run around at night chasing off the piggies is the best use of his personality and his enthusiasm. So that's what he gets to do. At night, he gets to run around and chase the piggies. He goes and gets them and he says, I'm going to go chew their legs off. Because if I leave them on a leash all night, then he can't get the piggies. And the piggies know it. They're smart little animals. And so to reward my animals, because I love them all very much, I thought it might be nice to make them some special treats. Don't you think so? So we've got all kinds of goodies here. We've got some ground-up carrots. We've got cucumbers. 
We've got a little bit of yogurt. We've got some peanut butter. We're just going to add a few things together and mix it all up. And we're going to make a really special treat because you deserve it, Chili. You've been good, good boy. We're going to make treats for all the animals. And you want to use organic ingredients. I like using a little bit of stevia for sweetening. Don't, don't give them real sugar. It's not good for them. And then you just use you know some nice fresh cucumbers chili doesn't like cucumbers but the bunnies do and our new guinea friend mr dumpling he likes cucumbers too so we mix them all up and then you just you can shape them in with one of these um candy molds you can squish it all in there after you mix it up you want to add a little bit of xanthan gum to it to give it a little bit of body and then later you can you can take them out of the mold when it feels like coming out and then you can make a nice little display for your animals so later on I'm gonna give them their special treats and they're gonna know how much they're loved little doggy biscuit a little fishy treat made from salmon with you know for the kitty cats and then cucumbers and carrots for the bunnies and the guineas and and I didn't make anything for the ducks but that's okay they know I love them I, they're the only ones with their own personal swimming pool so remember, you can always have a good day or you can have a better day. But always try to make it a beautiful day. Confucius says, if you know all the answers, then maybe you haven't been asked the right questions. So think about that. Think about making the world a better place and doing the best you can. We'll see you next time.